One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Maximum brightness. This is the Vortex Spitfire AR. This is actually a prism scope as opposed to a red dot, thus why it has an etched reticle. What are the main differences between a red dot and a prism such as this? Well, a red dot would have a floating red dot or a style of reticle similar to an EOTech or a holosun where it's a dot in a circle and sometimes something very similar. This could have that, but instead this has an etched reticle similar to most other magnified optics where you have any sort of style reticle, whether it be a duplex, a Christmas tree, you name it. That right there is always etched in the glass and something that you're going to see no matter what, even if the illumination is off or let's say broken. Pew pew! Pew! That is an extremely nice and handy feature. If you're like me and you're a little paranoid of some red dots failing on you, you don't have to worry about it. Pew pew! Pew pew! But that is not the only reason why you buy a prism like this. Another reason is you might have an astigmatism. For those of you that don't have an astigmatism, what that means is you can't see a red dot or holographic sight clearly. The dot's always blurry. Pew pew! Pew pew! So that is basically the best reason one can have for buying a prism over a red dot. They literally cannot see a red dot or holographic sight. Anyway, let's do a quick unboxing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a very special unboxing and review. Not because I'm reviewing something totally unique and special and awesome. No, but rather, who sent this in? This was sent in graciously by my internet pen pal, Hopophile. If you don't know who that is, crawl out from under that rock you've been living under and go check out his page, link down below. He is a savant when it comes to his reviews. He's extremely knowledgeable and very well versed in many different things, and he works for TFB TV. And in his spare time, he likes to do a little bit of brokeback mountaining in Utah with his buddy Brassfax. But I'm not going to judge him on that. This before us is the Vortex Spitfire AR Red Dot. That's going to be a point of contention very soon, as you will soon find out. But this is an AR setup Vortex Optic. I'll leave it at that. But turning the box on its back, you will see it's specifically designed for the AR platform, the Spitfire AR Prism Scope. So is it a Red Dot or is it, is it a Prism? Well, it's very clear from the box, if you're paying attention, this has a rear eyepiece. So, this is in fact going to be a prism. If you're buying this thing with the intentions of it being a red dot, you are going to be sorely mistaken, because it is truly, in fact, a prism. That is the most important thing to get in your head right now. This is a prism, not a red dot. And indeed, the owner's manual will confirm there is a reticle focus, or a rear eyepiece, on the back. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, with the exception of the reticle. The reticle is the only other thing we need to talk about, which has a 3 MOA dot, a 44 MOA donut that has a 6 MOA cross-section, and a 140 millimeter donut with a 3 MOA cross-section. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to say, oh, I will throw this on top of my shotgun, and it'll be the perfect pattern for it. You actually might have a very good point there, and I think that's where this would probably be better set up but you'll see why it's not capable in just a moment. And here it is. For the price point, this thing comes in at about $250. It undercuts the Primary Arms SLX Microprism 1X by about 20 bucks or so. However, I'm sure you could find both that and this on sale for a little bit less than those prices will believe. These are, of course, made in China, and for the price, you'd be foolish to think otherwise. The base just has two simple cross bolts. There are no locks on this. I don't like this because with the rounded radius of these cross bolts, you have to worry about how that's going to interfere with the top part of the pick rail. And if it's not 100% tight or it loosens up over time or you hit it against something, this could damage the back part of the pick rail when it's mounted on the rifle. As far as the battery compartment, you could see it takes a some sort of A battery. Unfortunately, it's a real pain in the ass to try to open this thing by itself. Let me see if I can get a coin in there. So quarter size coin is just too big you could see it's hitting the bottom and i don't want to destroy this too much so let me get something else that might work now you can see that the slot on this cap is rounded it's radius it was done with a woodruff cutter it's a lot easier and simpler to machine that way but vortex if you're listening go a little bit deeper because you can't really get a normal size coin in there even a nickel is going to be too big 
Uh, and the problem with the screwdriver is it might slip out. I got lucky and this thing is going to come out. But there's still really pos a lot of positive pressure from the O-ring that would prevent some people from opening this up without damaging it. Wow, that's under a lot of pressure. And there is a standard AAA battery. We already started mentioning them, but let's take a look at the button controls on the back. We have an up and a down button. Simple as that. Brightness increase, brightness decrease to shut them off. Press and hold to change the color. I should mention that. This is both red and green. We have green, we have red, we have green. Press them both simultaneously quickly. We'll change. Press and hold should shut it off. Yep, there we go. And uh, that's it. They're fine. Honestly, with them being on the back like this, it's okay. Because running a prism with a magnifier is a concept that some people think that they could do. But what that's going to do is push this thing farther forward. Let's say your eye relief is here. Now you got to fit a magnifier in between there. Now this thing is going to go to here. Yeah, you might be able to look through it with a magnifier. But once you tilt the magnifier away or remove it completely, your eye relief is now well out of the realm of usable on a prism. And you know what? I'll be making a video on that because a lot of people think like, oh, I can do this. Technically you can, but you don't want to. It's not going to work out in your favor. Either which way, the buttons should be on the side or on the top. They're just easier to get to. They're easier to see and spot. When they're back here, yeah, it could be a problem with a magnifier. But also more than that, now you got to be like trying to get your thumb in there because you got to remember the receiver is going to be right here. It's a fairly small area. If it's on the side or on the top, it's a lot more room to work with. And in my opinion, it would just make life a lot easier. These caps are actually pretty decent. They are Vortex branded, both the front and the rear. They are the same size, so you could swap them out if you have to, or if you lose one, you only have to worry about replacing truly one, which is nice. Now, again, because this is a prism, we do have a reticle focus on the back, which is all your rear eyepiece is designed to do. This has almost no resistance on it whatsoever. So I don't feel confident in this thing not walking out or getting damaged if it I was to hit this into something. All the way out, quarter turn in. We've got a lot of rocking and rolling in there. You can see it visually right there. Again, not something I feel overly confident with. This has like no resistance until we get right there. So basically all the way in, it starts getting a little bit tight. Um, it's okay, but not something I feel truly confident with. Now you might've noticed this cap sitting on my desk. This is the standard cap that comes with it. One click is half MOA. So half MOA adjustments are perfectly adequate on a 1X scope like this. And you could see it goes, what would that be? 30 MOA full way around. Or you can opt for the optional adjustable turret, which is set up for a 5.56 BDC. Now, I'm sure it says it somewhere in the man owner's manual about what weight bullet this is calibrated for, as well as what barrel length. I'm assuming 62 grain at 16 inch. That's just what most manufacturers run. But you can see we have from 100 out to about 700. I'm assuming that's going to be in yards because this is an MOA, but you never really know. You could hear the clicks fairly well. You could feel them fear, fear, yeah, dead, 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 fairly well. And it is hard to turn, which is very nice to see. Again, because more than likely, you're going to zero this out for like a, a 5200, which would be perfect for any sort of fighting carbine, and never adjust it. And you don't want these turrets to be loose like what we have with the rear eyepiece, because you don't want these things to get bumped or vibrated loose and then change your zero. Now, as far as the weight goes, it's just shy of 11 ounces, which actually isn't terrible. The Promethean LP1 from Lead and Steel comes in an ounce heavier than that. But if we were to take a look at the Holosun 512, it comes in considerably lighter. Now, why would you pick that versus, let's say, one of these? Well, we do have a couple of reasons, but the most notably will be your eye. If you have an astigmatism that's bad, picking up RDSs like this, will be tough to the eye sometimes they can bloom out they won't be sharp they won't be clear they'll be fuzzy and it could generally lead to a bad time behind the gun whereas with a prism like this you're gonna have an etched reticle that you can adjust the sharpness on and you do have illumination on it so you can hopefully pick it up in hard to read contrast areas but nevertheless it's just a different option however you can magnify these as opposed to this which you can't really magnify so let's get behind this thing and see what all the buzz is about
So this is really hard to see. I don't even know why I'm doing this, but will this thing at least have any sort of issues when you're adjusting your zeros? So you can see we have that fine little dot right on the side of my paper right there where that shadow is, is the only thing we really see. We're going to adjust the elevation. Hey, it actually lines up pretty good. As far as slop in the erectors, I do not see any. We'll go with the folds right there. Let's do play around with the windage. Hey, that almost looks halfway decent. Going left, going right, no real play, no real slop. Again, we're going to go up, which is down, and then down, which is up. That's actually pretty damn good. Not half bad. The only reason why I even bothered tracking it is because of sheer curiosity with myself. Plus, it's part of my review structure on most optics, so why not include it here? Next up, we're going to see what kind of distortion we have out of this thing. And you can see from the power lines already, it's pulling a little bit in the corners. But that's not uncommon for a lot of 1x, quote unquote, 1x scopes, whether it be an LPVO or another microprism. The only other 1x microprism I've ever gotten my hands on is the only one that I think, to my knowledge, has been produced, which is the Primary Arms Micro SLX 1x. And to me, that is basically the gold standard. This is got some things about it that are really nice as far as feature set goes but overall i think the primary arms has it licked you could see here we have some pulling from the corners i already mentioned that the primary arms has a little bit less than that you could definitely check out my review to find out more on that scope i'm going to do a minor comparison with that and this very soon but i'm not going to do a full-on blown out review of it because i don't think it's really going to be ultimately justifiable there is something else that needs to be addressed with this thing, and that's the eyepiece. I already said earlier, it's very loose, and when you start adjusting it, it moves around a lot. You'll see more of that soon. Illumination on this thing is what I would consider to be acceptable for most environments. Again, this being a prism with a etched reticle, illumination almost takes a second step back from that, but it is nice to have brighter illumination when you can have it. I don't think the overall brightness of the illumination is limited by the battery. I think maybe they just decided to illuminate too much. Maybe the center dot, maybe the dot center dot with the inside donut would have been perfectly fine. But Vortex decided to do the entire thing. Different strokes for different folks in different companies. For me personally, I'd much rather be happier with a smaller dot in the middle that's really bright. Or again, maybe that donut in the middle, but just a little bit brighter than what it, this is ultimately capable of. In low light environments, it's perfectly fine, but true daytime environments like this, it is lacking. As far as the eye box on this thing, I'd say it's pretty good. Again, probably really close to what I found the Primary Arms SLX 1X to be. Of course, I'm going to make all the comparisons to that because that's the only other true 1X microprism I've ever reviewed. These two are basically the same, even though on the box it claims that this is a red dot, even though it's got a net reticle and a rear diopter. Don't even get me started. I don't know what the hell Vortex was thinking, but they were thinking something. One thing you will note is as we pull farther away from the optic, you see these like little flat bars. We saw the exact same thing with the SLX 1X, but with the SLX 1X, when you went side to side, I felt we had a lot more flexibility than what we have here. So ultimately, I do believe that the eye box on the SLX is a little bit more forgiving and thus a little bit better. But this has a much larger field of view, which we'll talk about soon. However, this also has much more distortion when you start going slightly off center as opposed to the SLX. So there's definitely gives and takes between both of them. I want to answer a question really quickly that a lot of people have been asking and a lot of people have been trying. Can you truly magnify a 1x prism? Clearly, the answer is yes. This is with my HMX 3x behind it, and it works perfectly fine but you have to adjust both diopters to get the image just right. And keep in mind, now you have to push that optic a lot farther forward than you normally would. You can see any slight change to, the, to either diopter is going to change the overall image. And it does start to play around with the balance that you need between what you can see through both the magnifier and the prism or just the prism by itself. So you might not be able to get that balance 100% right. You can get it really close, but to my eye, it wasn't as sharp as it could be with either of them being, you know, perfectly set properly. 
The main reason why I don't recommend trying to magnify one of these, whether it's this or the SLX, is because of the eye relief. The eye relief is not designed to be this far ahead. Yes, you could technically use it, but it really greatly limits your overall usability of the scope as a result. One thing I didn't really talk about is the view looking through this. It's got a good field of view. It's rated at about 79 feet at 100 yards, which is a little bit more than the primary arms SLX, which is rated about 76.5 feet at 100 yards. Again, though, that could ultimately change depending on how far away or how close that is to your eye. The closer it is to your eye, the more you're going to be able to see because the closer you're looking through it. It's optics. It's the way it works. But I will give it to this Vortex. It has a very small amount of body when you're looking through it. One thing with the SLX is it's got that big rotary dial illumination knob on the, the 9 o'clock side, and you do see it at all times. Removing the included scope cap reveals an even smaller, slimmer body, which is something that I will always be very happy to see. When you get behind this thing just right, it does really start to fade away as far as the scope body. But you're left with an image that isn't perfectly lined up with what you're seeing. And you can get it very sharp with the diopter, don't get me wrong, but it does have that little bit of distortion. And look at that movement right there. It's so much. It's so much movement. I, I, I really feel like if you accidentally bump it into something, it's going to get jammed up. It's not great as far as the overall feel and finish of this thing. And you know, for the price, 250 ish dollars, you can find these on sale right now. I think Amazon's gone for like 200. Don't know how long that's going to last. I am currently voicing this over in the beginning of August, but that could always change. This does undercut the primary arms by about 20 bucks or so, but I think it's a little bit less of a scope. And that's the perfect segue into putting these two side by side. So I had already mentioned that the field of view is a little bit less on the SLX, but what you're currently seeing, this thing is mounted much farther forward on the pick rail, and we still have a beautiful view looking through it. Again, though, it does have a much larger body externally, again, due to the rotary knob, but also the elevation and the windage turrets. That is one area that I really have to hand it to the Spark. It's got a much slimmer profile, and it does make a difference to my eye. However, the primary arms also has the ability to mount it at different heights, whereas the Spark AR is only set for a lower one-third co-witness. So if you want to go higher, now you have to add base plates. With the primary arms, you got everything included in the box. And if you want to run any sort of different bases and adapters and QD mounts, whatever you want to do, it's a standard micro ACOG. As far as the eye box, there you go. I really do think that the SLX has the edge on it. I like the SLX so much that it's found a permanent home on top of my Ruger PCC, and I never plan on taking it off. It's held up great for a few thousand rounds of 9mm, and it just keeps on working. As far as the size and weight, the SLX just edges it out, but I also think the SLX has a much better look to it, but the looks are completely subjective, but it just plain old works, and I prefer the reticle option better with the SLX as opposed to the Spark. Again, one area that you have to think about is price. The SLX is a little bit more expensive, but only by about 20 bucks when they're usually on their normal prices, respectively. And it's 20 bucks, in my opinion, well spent going with the primary arms. There aren't a lot of other comparisons that I can make against this thing. So I'm going to roll in another alternative if you think that you might want a little bit of magnification. And without going three to four times the budget of whether it's the Spark or the GLX, if you don't want to spend the money on an ACOG, the GLX-2X from Primary Arms is probably the best thing you can get on the market. This uh, I, bar I let my friend borrow, and he hasn't given it back. He says, you're not getting this back. I love this thing. And I love it too. 2X is a phenomenal magnification range. Honestly, when I'm running an LPVO in a running gun environment inside any sort of distance, I keep it like 1.5 to 2X. If I really need to stretch it out, I like the, the variability of a true... LPVO stretching out to 4 or even 6x, but 2x is a really nice in between for just about every sort of general purpose shooting. And on a general purpose carbine, 556223, something like that is, in my opinion, a great alternative. But I'm only doing this side by side to see if maybe you want to try that out. And if you do, for about a hundred bucks more, you can get yourself into something like the GLX 2x. Now, this is also on sale right now. Again, this is early August 23 for about the same price as the Spark AR 
or the SLX One X, right around 250 bucks, and that is a hell of a deal. They do come up on better sales every once in a while. Keep your eyes out. You never know what you're going to find. But ultimately, between these two, I'm definitely going to go with the GLX because very similar to what we saw with the SLX, you have more modability and adjustability with the mount. It's got a nicer reticle set for me. I like the fact it's got shake awake, just like the SLX. It's got more stuff going on, and it's all stuff that I want. I really don't like the reticle setup on the Spark AR. It just takes away from it just a little bit. I think it's got one too many donuts. If it had the center dot and a donut that was in between those two, maybe I'd go with that. But ultimately, it's just set up in one particular way. But it's an AR, quote-unquote, scope. So, yeah, you're, of course you're not going to want to run it lower. But what happens if you do? You're not going to have the adjustability with the Spark. With something like the GLX, you will. I needed to at least put three scopes against this thing as a comparison. And the last one is, it's a red dot. <laughs> I have nothing else for you guys, unless you want to run an LPVO. But then you're adding size, you're adding weight, you're you're adding a bit of cost, depending on what you want, especially with illumination, if you, if you want it to be true, truly good. So I just chose the Lead and Steel LP1. It's the only other red dot that I have readily available, and I've been doing a lot of filming with that recently because it's a really good red dot. It's heavy. It's priced a little bit more than the Spark. It's about $100 more. It's around $350, bucks, similar to what the GLX is normally. But this is a very large window, quote-unquote, duty-grade red dot. And if you're the type of person that you're not too sure if you have an astigmatism or not, is this like what I would ultimately recommend? It's like the only optic possible? No, there's a ton of other options out there. But as far as a large window like this, you got some hollow suns, you got this, and then you go up to like the EOTechs and the Hueys. So it, there's, this is a good middle ground in my opinion, especially when you magnify it. Because when you magnify something like the LP1, you get a really sharp reticle as opposed to basically every hollow sun I've ever magnified, with the exception of like the EPS. For whatever reason, the EPS magnifies extremely well. But their 512, their 510s, their 515s, the reticles always seem to just not be perfectly round with something like the lp1 it's not the case you got to find out however if it's going to actually work for you if not then you got to stick with the prism which is probably why you're looking at a prism in the first place my final thoughts are going to be short it's a decent offering from vortex but i think there are better things in the market me personally i'm absolutely going to go with the slx 1x or the 2x this doesn't fit any of my roles because i like the adjustability on height I like the reticle options with other scopes. It's just the way it is. But you might love this thing. You might have this thing and run it and not mind that the battery compartment is absolutely shittily designed. You might not mind how loose the rear eyepiece is. And that's great. That's fine. As long as you're happy, I'm very happy for you. If you're not happy with it or you're on the fence about going with this, there are other alternatives that I would personally recommend and have recommended for many people that have been satisfied with that recommendation. The SLX and the GLX are just two of those options. Every single person I've showed the LP1 to has been satisfied with how beautiful it is, with the exception of its weight. It's literally, if you run out of ammunition, you could take it off with the QD mount and bash someone's skull in with it. Do you want that? Do you need that? Some people might. Me personally, I'm indifferent. That's it, folks. A huge thanks to Hoppafile for sending this in. He absolutely hates this thing, and I can see why he would. He's a negative Nancy. Me, I try to find the positives in everything, but with this, there's only a couple, and that's basically like the price when it's on sale, it's 200 bucks. It's like, if you really don't mind all of this thing's quirks, then for 200 bucks, it's not terrible. You could save the $70 or so going with the SLX, but Again, personally, that would be my recommendation if you want to go with the 1X Prism. If you want to go with a little bit more magnification, keep it a Prism. The GLX, if you want to go even more expensive, then, of course, you could check out the Mini ACOGs. The one half Xs are really nice. But again, the reticles, they've changed those recently. And for me, they don't really do much. But again, they might do it for you. And that's all that matters. So a huge thank you to Hopophile again for sending this in. But a huge thank you for all of you, my lovely viewers, for keeping me in business. Because without you, I have no reason to do this. So thank you all very much for staying tuned and watching me ramble on for way too long. Thank you all very much. And as always, see you again next time.
and a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.